Hi, welcome to my lab today. We will do a turn on of this uh, radar altimeter. So the radar altimeter is one of the two different uh, altitude altimeters. So the first one is to measure the static pressure of the air. As the static pressure depends on the altitude, you can have a measurement of the altitude by uh, measuring the pressure. And the second type is the radar altimeter. So the radar altimeter is based on the time taken by a wave uh, transmitted to the ground and reflected to, to the airplane. So the time between the moment the wave is transmitted and the moment the time is received, there will be a pulse width and the pulse width is measured by the instrument. So let's open this thing and see what is inside and maybe I can do reverse engineering and maybe after I can make some tests on it. So let's start the teardown. So on the rear we have uh, this connector, there are several terminals. I hope all terminals are not used. So I don't know the power supply of this thing. You have some indications here, but nothing else. There is no hidden plate as returned in this uh, cover. But it is not a big instrument. Something, uh, it is something like uh, 15 centimeters long. So on the back we have just uh, this uh, large uh, nut. So we can see we have uh, two pantothermeters here, and one uh, should be a uh, DC motor. No, there are several, there are several uh, wires here. So maybe a uh, synchro resolver. I don't know. We have also one switch here. And this switch is um, I just uh, put on off and there is a test uh, okay you have another switch when you press in order to make a test so you have uh, this one for testing and this one for on off feature and we have uh, four electronic boards here Okay, so I think yes, we need to remove this uh, four screws in order to be able to remove the boards. So I will remove the, the screws. I will need to remove this ones also because this seems to be a power supply board. We have some coils here. And uh, yeah, we can see uh, which uh, seems to be uh, an ACR or old uh, as a vintage package. And it seems that this uh, plate is also used as a dissipator because we can see that this uh, SCR probably is uh, is mounted on this uh, little uh, metal plate here which is uh, screwed in this plate so I will remove uh, this uh, these screws also but we need a very small screwdriver for that okay so now I think we can remove all the boards we will remove first the power supply board I don't know exactly maybe I will use the plier for that Very difficult. Yes, okay. So we can see on this board we have uh, some relays, three actually. 
you have two coils, they are not transformers that only coils, so maybe they are used for uh, for filtering. And we have two uh, bypass capacitor, it seems. So this is maybe a protection or uh, maybe it is used for the power on off. This is maybe used effectively to to activate the power of this thing. So there is nothing uh, special on this board. Second one. So the second one, uh, we have what is, seems to be a power supply. So we have uh, several uh, diodes here. And probably uh, yeah, they are connected to this transformer. So this transformer is obviously uh, a power supply uh, transformer with different uh, secondaries. We have some filtering cap here. So we have at least uh, three DC outputs here. And we have uh, nice capacitors here. 12 microfarad. And, uh, and other uh, diodes. So I think we, uh, we have uh, in total maybe five uh, power supplies, probably. We found another transformer and uh, another cap, so maybe there is another one, a few transistors, and uh, this part, the reference are obscure for me, I don't know, but probably op pump, but I'm not sure. And they have a 10, 10 pins, so I don't know. This is the third one. This is the third board. So this is obviously uh, the analog front end. Maybe we have uh, several adjustments here. Also the same, uh, the same part, huh, probably op amps, and uh, two transistors here. Uh, maybe GFET two uh, N third. G8 uh, yeah, this is probably GFET and they have uh, four terminals. So maybe one one terminal is connected to the to the case for noise reduction. Okay. And the last one. And the last one is also uh, which looks like analog front end also, so we have uh, the same, a lot of, uh, we have uh, several uh, op amps also, uh, I think they are the same reference. Hein. And we have here uh, some transistors, probably, yes. Cannot see the reference at this moment. There's a kind of small dissipator here. Okay. So from the rest, uh, we have uh, these potentiometers we have already seen, and that's it. This motor. So probably it's a servo loop also, the motor and, uh, and one potentiometer. So the value of this potentiometer is uh, weird. 18.5 kilo ohms is not a common value. And the other one is 1k. So probably they have good uh, linearity. Uh, this one is uh, plus or minus 0. Point, I cannot see. It's, it's maybe 15 percent. 0.15% and the other one I don't know for one is used probably because we have a setting here so, uh, so one is used uh, for the measurement of this setting and the other one is for the is for the servo loop uh, for the needle and you have also an indication so maybe you have an indication with um, with the mechanical digits here but uh, it is hidden by this flag, so there should be an electromagnet also, so probably uh, two of these wires. I 
I think we should have a backlight also somewhere, so maybe two of these wires also are used for the for the elimination of this thing. And we have on the back a PCB with uh, the connectors and uh, one capacitor on the, in here. Probably capacitor, yes, a Kemet. And on the rear, actually, we have a few connectors. So we have two, two sheeted cables, probably for, th for the input, and, uh, and some wires, uh, a dozen of wires. Which which goes to the to the rear connector. So the next step, I will try to do the reverse engineering of this board. Uh, this thing uh, is a bit complicated. I expected something less complicated. So I will try to do it in uh, one day, but I think it will be difficult because you have uh, several low pumps on, on this stuff. This is the mechanical assembly of this indicator. So you will find here the motor. Actually, it's a rotary electromagnet with only one turn. This one turn motor is coupled mechanically with this potentiometer. And when I turn this pinion, you can see that uh, is a movement of the needle. And I have connected uh, this uh, electromagnet here to a power supply, so I can uh, I can turn on this power supply. So for the moment, so you can see. So this is for a current of 150 milliamp approximately. You have a full scale with a current of 260 milliamp. So you need at least uh, this current uh, in order to to drive uh, this uh, needle. And of course, there is a closed loop in order to set the optimum current for a given position. So I will start the reverse engineering with this uh, power supply board. Actually, this part was not a transistor like uh, I thought at the beginning, but actually it's a NPN transistor. It's uh, this one, a 2N3749. Uh, it's a 5 amps uh, bipolar transistor with a Jan TX level qualification, so it's a military specification part. So I will start the reverse engineering of this board. I will draw the schematics directly. As you can see, there are two calls on this board. Each one is connected to, to one terminal of this edge connector here. You can see that the other terminal of this coil is fed to this uh, decoupling capacitor and the bypass. The coils are the input on the power supply, probably. So we start with the, with the coils.
So now we start the reverse engineering of this power supply board. So actually uh, in this board uh, we have uh, one uh, circuit here. It's a FGM 38510. After some researches I found that uh, this is actually a military version of this uh, classic LM723 in a one package, in metal can package here. Otherwise we have uh, two NPN transistors here. We have also uh, one classic 2N2222 and one classic also 2N2907. And this one is also, I cannot see, maybe a 2N2222, no, 2907 also, a PNP. And two transformers, so I will start the reverse engineering of this board. I think it will take uh, one hour or something. That's strange because this small transformer here seems to have only uh, six terminals and they are connected in parallel, so maybe it's just uh, an inductor, uh, probably because I, I cannot see other terminals. So I finished the reverse engineering of this device. It was a bit complicated. It took me two complete days to make the complete reverse engineering. And I needed to use uh, some pills like this, because I had a headache at the end. So on this first page you can see the power supply of this instrument. It was a surprise because I didn't expect to find a switched mode power supply on this device. So actually there are two power supply inside. So the first one and the main one actually. So the main power supply is on the right here. Take to make a, a zoom on it. So actually it, it uses the standard part hein, that, which is a, which is a LM723 the military equivalent which is this strange reference but it is identical except probably with a, with mill specifications. So the inductor actually is uh, this one. It is a small inductor which is present on this board, uh, this one. And this uh, switching uh, transistor here is in the other board, uh, this one. So it is this big uh, transistor here. So this power supply uh, delivers a voltage of uh, 12 volts. The regulation is here with, with this uh, resistive divider with a reference of uh, 
of 7.15 volt uh, uh, nominal so it gives you, if we make the calculation here, it gives a voltage of 12 volt here so this 12 volt is present uh, at this point here and this 12 volt is fed to this second uh, power supply so this is uh, an auto scient uh, power supply so it, it uses actually the fact that uh, the voltage is proportional to the variation of, of flux so the flux actually is uh, limited in this device, in, in the primaries by uh, limiting uh, the base current of the transistors so when the current increases on one of these two primaries the current will, will increase until until the maximum possible collector current which is defined uh, by the base current and the, and the current gain of the transistor so when the current is maximum, the flux will be a maximum also so the induced voltage will fall to zero or close to zero and at the same time the flux will decrease and this will make an inversion of the voltage of this winding and it will be a reversal in the other so when, when one voltage is positive the other one is negative and there, there will be a, a change on the conduction on these two transistors automatically so the frequency is defined actually by the primary inductance of this transformer and the maximum current also so this uh, gives actually at the secondary two AC voltage which are uh, rectified by this uh, by this uh, diode bridge and you have two uh, capacitors for, for filtering and you have using this uh, feature an, an isolated uh, power supply with two secondary voltages which should be because I have already made uh, some measurements so it is a uh, 13 plus 13 volt and minus 13 volt here so this is for the power supply of the instrument so actually it is uh, the reason why there is uh, such a filter at the input and so I to make a zoom on it so this filter is present on the first board on uh, this one so you can see the two coils here the two bypass here and uh, some capacitor you can see here and here the second part of the schematic actually is the main feature of the instrument is to displace the altitude I will try to make a zoom okay so on the right of this page you can find uh, the, the motor which drives the, the relay actually it is not a motor it is more it is more an electromagnet a rotary electromagnet so depending on the current flowing into this electromagnet you will have a different position of the needle for full altitude you need a current of 250 million or something like that I made some measurement so you have a relay in series with this motor and this relay actually is on when everything is okay if there is an error which is indicated by the flag here here you have a flag, a red and black flag. In this position, uh, the relay is uh, is open actually. And the contacts are open, and the motor uh, cannot be activated. This is a normal situation. So you have a driver here to drive uh, this electromagnet, which is uh, which are actually these two transistors here. And you have the error amplifier here. At the input of the error amplifier, you have this potentiometer, which is mechanically connected to the needle. This is uh, this potentiometer here. So you can find some strange uh, feedback here. When the output of voltage of this buffer is low, that means uh, below the, 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 the assault of these uh, diodes, you have an open loop gain at, at DC because you have only a capacitor in the feedback loop so the gain is very high so this uh, works for uh, low speed until the voltage is, is uh, high enough so this diode will conduct and this will introduce uh, this uh, feedback uh, component on the loop so, so the gain will, will decrease so you have the different uh, devices uh, it is a bit uh, complicated so you have also this strange transistor arrangement so you can see that the two transistors are the base and emitters connected uh, uh, back to back. So when the current flowing into the feedback loop here 
is above a given limit, hein, which is defined by, by this resistor. So the current is uh, roughly uh, 0.7 volt divided by uh, 1k.8. So roughly uh, something like 0. Uh, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 uh, milliamp. In this case, one of these transistors will conduct, and the collector of one of these transistors they are connected together. Actually, this uh, collector will have the voltage of this point. Okay, I don't know why exactly because this you have also a divider, and this uh, terminal is fed to, uh, to the other board, so it is a bit uh, complicated. So the input voltage is the DC voltage here. Okay, and so the input here is the sum of this voltage and this one, with some, uh, with some uh, factors, huh, of course, with some scaling factors. Okay, and the, and the motor will, uh, will run until this voltage is uh, zero. So in, On the bottom of the page, you can find the comparison function. The comparison function is a limit you can uh, set by this knob. You have an altitude limit. So when, when the limit is reached, a relay is activated. So this uh, index is connected mechanically to one potentiometer, which is uh, this one. It's a strange value, 18.5 uh, 18 kilohms. So the potentiometer is here. It is supplied by a negative reference voltage here. And the measurement is here. So at the input of this uh, comparator, you have the sum of the measurement and the negative reference voltage, uh, which depends on the position of this potentiometer. And when the voltage is above uh, zero here, this transistor uh, is off and the relay is not activated. And uh, when this voltage is uh, below zero volt, so the voltage as the output of this comparator will be to the negative rail, close to minus 10 volt or something like that, and this will turn on the transistor, and the two relays will be activated, and the contacts are available at the rear of the instrument. So this is for the main function of the instrument. So the last schematic is this one. It took me uh, some time to understand everything. So first, uh, you have on the top left of this uh, sheet, uh, this uh, circuit, uh, which is a uh, negative voltage reference. So this circuit actually uh, uses another controller, uh, 7, 723, but it uses only the voltage reference. So the voltage reference at the output here, it's, it's about 7 volt. So this voltage reference is amplified with this amplifier. Actually, the gain is below 1, because this resistor is below this one. So you should have something at the output, a voltage uh, of minus 6 volt or something like that. Okay, so on, th on this side of this page, so here you can uh, see actually the input amplifier. So the input here is connected to the rear of the instrument with a negative amplifier. So this voltage as this output is a voltage measurement which is fed to this circuit in order to, to activate this servo control loop and this one for the limit. So this is not complicated, but we have this circuit here. Actually, this is easy to understand. The goal of this circuit is a return in the front of this instrument. So you can see that uh, the scale of this indicator is uh, 0 to 5 for about uh, two thirds of the of the complete scale, and after you have uh, another scale from five to ten, and another scale from ten to fifty. It is not a logarithm scale, but something like that, in order to make a compression of data, in order to have a, uh, to have a better uh, resolution from zero to five, and a lower lower uh, resolution for the high altitudes. So this is the goal of this uh, circuit. So actually, you can find uh, you can find the GFET, but actually, it is what is called a pad, a picoampere uh, diode, in order to have a very small uh, leakage current. Uh, sometimes you can find uh, you can find the GFET instead of a diode because you can have a very small uh, leakage current, uh, something like uh, one or ten picoamp. So this uh, this uh, GFET actually, I think I have the data sheet somewhere. So this is this one. So we can see that you have effectively a very small leakage current. It is written somewhere. Uh, OK. 
Can not see it? Let me see. Yes, okay, it is, it is written here, so you have less than 10 picoampere at room temperatures, of course, if the temperature increases, the leakage current increases, something, if, if I remember correctly, the leakage current can double each, for each increase of 6 degrees or something like that. So you can find uh, this kind of uh, diode, for example, in a multimeter uh, for the protection of input or, uh, or for the ohmmeter function when you have a very small uh, current. So you need to have uh, to have a diode with a very small uh, leakage current. And one particular part is a 2N4117, uh, which has a leakage current of, uh, it's a, it's a GFET, which has a leakage current of less than one picoamp. So if you need uh, to to make a protection with a sensitive measurement with a very small current you can use uh, this arrangement instead of a diode it will be better so actually this circuit permits to change the gain of this amplifier uh, depending on the input voltage if the voltage here is positive you will have a positive voltage at the output and the diode will be conductive okay? so in this case you will insert in the input uh, current another current which depends on the, on the on the output so it will change the gain but if this voltage is zero or negative you will have a negative uh, voltage here and this diode uh, will be off and in this case this uh, all this device will have any any effect because as this voltage is a zero here so no current will flow into this resistor and the gain uh, remains un unchanged, so you have the gain of this amplifier. But until the voltage is above uh, zero here, uh, you have a change of the gain. You have uh, two different uh, circuits in order to have uh, the two slopes, uh, because you need, uh, you need uh, three, actually, you need uh, three different uh, uh, gains, uh, one for this part, another one for this part, and the third one for, uh, for this uh, part of the display. So all of this thing is adjusted using this potentiometer in order to, to, to have the exact scale and also to fix the limit of each, uh, each of them. So I made a simulation. I will give you here a copy of the result of the simulation. You can see on the screen uh, the result of the simulation. So you can see that uh, the gain of this uh, circuit will change according to the amplitude and the so this uh, simulation gives the output voltage here according to the input voltage here. So the last part of this uh, circuit is, uh, is the error detection, which is on the bottom of this page. So on the right of this circuit, I can find the relay. So there are actually two contacts. One is used to disconnect the motor when there is a problem, and the other one here permits to activate the flag here. So when the flag is, is in this position, actually the, the relay is not connected. There are several detections. So you can see that you have an OR gate here. You have uh, the saturation of this transistor in order to activate the, the relay, which will change the position of this contact, and this will activate uh, the, the solenoid of the flag. So in order to saturate this transistor, you need to saturate also this transistor. And actually it is the case if this point is open. Because in this case you have this resistive divider here, which will polarize the base here, uh, below the voltage of this uh, diode here, of this inner uh, diode. If one of the two outputs is at high level, this will produce a high level at the base, and the transistor turn off, and this transistor is off also, and the solenoid is not activated. So here you have, a, you have a detection, actually, of the measurement itself. So when the voltage here is too high, that is to say if this voltage is above zero volt, hein, so this will introduce a high level at this point, and the solenoid uh, will be in the, the error uh, position. On the other side, it is more complicated. So I don't know exactly the goal of this second comparator, because one of the inputs actually is connected to the rear connector, so it depends on the voltage applied to this terminal. For the second input, uh, we have a pull-up, yeah, which is connected to the voltage of reference, which is uh, 7 volt approximately. And you have also these two diodes. So I don't know exactly the goal of this because these two diodes actually uh, correspond to the output here 
of these two amplifiers. And you have also another input with the transistor Q4 here. So you have a small hysteresis here. But you have also a voltage at pin 10. And this voltage actually comes from the, uh, comes from the other page. I didn't understand exactly the goal of, of this uh, voltage here. So that's all for this uh, reverse engineering. I think it was interesting. The change of the of the gain according to the input voltage was interesting. It was at the end uh, for today, so I will try to make running uh, this uh, device if, if I have a little time. Otherwise, uh, see you next time for a new reverse engineering and a new test on aircraft instrument or something else. Thank you for watching this video and bye bye.